Welcome everyone and thank you for joining me. These are the readings and sermon for the second Sunday of Advent, Sunday, December 5th. So let us begin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, give to all the people of the world knowledge of your salvation through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of the prophet Malachi, chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. A reading from Malachi. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is a reading of <clears throat> from Luke chapter 1 <clears throat> verses 68 through 79 Blessed are you Lord the God of Israel you have come to your people and set them free you have raised up for us a mighty savior born of the house of your servant David through your holy prophets you promised of old to save us from our enemies from the hands of all who hate us to show mercy to our forebears and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins, in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Our second reading this morning comes from Philippians chapter 1 verses 3 through 11, a reading from Philippians. I thank my God every time I remember you constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you because you hold me in your heart for all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how, lo how I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we're reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip ruler of the region of Iturea and Trachonitis, and Lysanias ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. 
He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from the babe of Bethlehem. Amen. A young mother encountered her son on the street when he should have been in school. When the boy finished explaining why he wasn't where he was supposed to be, the mother replied, I'm not accusing you, son, of telling a lie. I'm just saying that I have never heard of a school that gives time off for good behavior. Well, this certainly isn't the time of year for children to be doing naughty things, especially skipping school. That could result in a stocking full of coal on Christmas morning. But you know, thinking about being naughty or nice reminds me that one of the fun things I always look forward to about this time of year is watching all those Christmas specials on TV that I grew up watching as a kid, like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, A Charlie Brown Christmas, my personal favorite, Frosty the Snowman and How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Those classic shows have been holiday favorites for over 40 years. But there's one show that I forgot to mention, and that is Santa Claus is Coming to Town. If I were to borrow that classic line from the show's theme song and apply it to this second Sunday of Advent, it would go like this. You better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Jesus Christ is coming to town. Well, that isn't exactly what the prophet Malachi said to Israel, but it's pretty close. He was telling them to look out because the Lord would come soon to judge and there wouldn't be any time taken off for good behavior. He was saying that God would send a messenger to prepare the way for the coming of the Lord. We understand John the Baptist to be that messenger who prepared the way for the coming of Jesus. But let's take a closer look at the context of what Malachi was saying. <clears throat> he wrote this prophecy during a period when Israel was in captivity in Babylon about 500 years before Jesus. Because Israel had been unfaithful to him, God had allowed them to be conquered by the Babylonians. The best and brightest of Israel were carried off into captivity. And it was during this time that Israel was re-examining itself. Malachi wrote on the nature of God's love and justice. He prophesied about the sins of Israel and God's judgment upon them. He also declares that God will forgive them if they will only turn back to him. Malachi may have been writing 2,500 years ago, but it still applies to us today. A little earlier in Malachi, he says that the people have tired the Lord with their words. What words, they ask. So Malachi tells them, they have called what is right wrong and what is wrong right. That certainly applies to us today. People are constantly calling what is wrong right. We live in a day when living in sin is called an alternative lifestyle as if it were just a different way of living. And civilians killed in wartime are called collateral damage as if there was no death involved. Now, not only did the Israelites pervert right from wrong, but they were also questioning the justice of God. They were questioning it because they felt that the way they were being treated seemed unjust. But people do that today. We see the murder of innocent people at the hands of terrorists or some other disturbed individual, and we question if there really is a just God in charge of the universe. More often, we look at the problems in our own lives and we question why God lets us suffer. 
Malachi responds to this last question. Where is the God of justice? He says that the God of justice is coming, but he's not coming the way we would expect. The Israelites in captivity would think that God was coming to bring justice to the Babylonians and punish them for what they had done to the Israelites. But the prophet Malachi says, God is coming to bring judgment upon them. He said, the Lord is coming like a fuller soap and like a refiner's fire. Now, for those who don't know, fuller soap was a lye-based soap that would remove stains from fabric chemically. But it was so strong, you certainly wouldn't want to use it to wash your hands. And a refiner's fire uses very high temperatures to burn away the impurities in metals. So when the God of justice comes, he will come to purify and cleanse his people. Israel should expect God to scrub them clean. When you refinish a piece of wood, you often need to sand off the old finish. Well, when the God of justice comes, he will send the Israelites clean of their impurities. When a refiner refines gold, he or she turns up the temperature and melts the gold and then burns off all of its impurities. In the same way, God will turn up the heat on Israel and burn away their spiritual impurities. Now, back in Malachi's day, God's people were looking for a Messiah to come and deliver them. Malachi told them that God himself was coming to bring justice. He told them that God would send a messenger to prepare the way. That messenger was John the Baptist who came to prepare the way for the Messiah. And Jesus' birth would be the fulfillment of the prophecy that God would come to purify his people. How? Through his death, Jesus has purified all believers by washing us in his blood, which acts like the fuller soap, cleaning the stain of sin from our lives. Just as the Israelites looked for the coming of a Messiah, so we await his second coming. We know that he will come to judge the world and to bring about peace. Let's just be careful we don't fall into the same trap that the people of Malachi's day did. They were so busy focusing on the injustices of their oppressors that they refused to see the injustices they were committing and their own need for repentance. <clears throat> Friends, the Lord of justice is coming, but he may be coming to first purify his people. It's like going to the dentist, which is always just one of my favorite things to do. They tell you to floss, to floss and brush after each meal. Otherwise, when you get your teeth cleaned, It'll be painful to get all that plaque scraped off your teeth, especially around your gums. Well, truth be told, I have found that if you actually brush and floss like they tell you, it makes the cleaning process a whole lot easier. In a sense, God is coming to clean up our spiritual hygiene. So it might be a good idea for us to follow Malachi's and John the Baptist's instructions for spiritual hygiene and blush and brush and floss our souls now. That way, it won't be so painful when Jesus comes. <clears throat> My friends, this season of Advent is a time of spiritual preparation for Christmas. The celebration of the coming of God is near. Are we prepared to meet him now? Let us take this opportunity to clean up our lives. Let us repent of our own injustices and get our hearts right instead of pointing to the injustices of others. Then, when Jesus comes, we will be ready. Amen. And may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you all now and forevermore. Amen.